I found the culprit who broke TCG player. You broke TCG player, you little fuck. He broke TCG player. This is the bitch who puts all those Korean listings on TCG player. <laughs> and my hole is not relaxed. Our anus will not be relaxed until TCG player is finally fucking fixed. Let's dive on into today's video, shall we? Destroy the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button because, man, it just keeps on going up and up and up like a slap machine so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, Man, it feels good to be making content again. I know I keep on talking about how I just got back from my doctor's appointments, but it just feels so good to be healthy and have a clean bill of health. The tumors are staying small. Life is going good. I'm drinking a diet Pepsi because someone drank all my regular Pepsi and I hate playing Call of Duty and my feet hurt. <laughs> if you know what that's from, then you are the real OG. Ladies and gentlemen, I also apologize if you hear any thunder outside. It's because it's raining like shit outside. But anyway, I want to talk today about something that I don't really see a lot of people talking about and I feel really needs to be addressed because I don't know why the fuck TCG Player allows this. Um, and that is the fact that TCG Player is inherently broken. And I've been seeing this especially with uh, a lot of cards that are going up in price now due to Kazuki Takahashi's passing. As you know, if you don't know, I should say, uh, he did pass away from a snorkeling accident. Uh, it seems to be that uh, a shark or something took a bite out of him and he passed away while snorkeling in the water in Okinawa. He was 60 years old, has the same birth date as me, uh, October 4th, actually, believe it or not. Um, and I, I made a post about it and then I, I started or made a community post about it and I started watching the market. And what I noticed was that, of course, all the anniversary pack cards that were released years ago were going to the moon. Well, wouldn't you believe that Shiba Warrior Taro has a listing for near mint? All of the other listings right now are 80 plus dollars, right? But there's one on there for $45.96 from S Car Gaming, E S Car Gaming. Now I'm not trying to like spotlight this guy or girl, whatever. I'm not trying to spotlight them and say, oh, they're a piece of shit. That's not what I'm trying to say. Because it comes back to TCG Player because it is within their system that they could fix this. Now, maybe it's on the seller's end where they could just take down the post altogether. I don't know. I don't sell on TCG Player. But the fact remains that if you try, at least right now at the making of this video, going on TCG Player and you type in Shiba Warrior Taro and you see one listed for $45.96 and you think, oh shit, I'm going to swipe this one on up because all the other listings are $80 all the way up to 100 bucks. You try and click on it and you're going to get a message that says these items in your cart are associated with an offline seller. If the seller is off fucking line, why would their listing still be on the fucking card? It doesn't make any sense. Even the mod plays are getting near like 40 bucks now. So if I see one from near mint, obviously I'm going to try and go for it. So how many people have ran into this issue that they see a card that's cheap and then it turns out, oh, the seller's offline. Fuck you. You got to go get an $80 one. And you're like, well, fuck, that sucks. <laughs> so uh, that is big issue number one. Big issue number two here, and I'm going to pull up Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion Starlight Rare for this example. And you've seen me talk about it in my market watches before. Other people have talked about it in their market watches. And that is Korean cards on the fucking marketplace. This burns my asshole into the ground. Yes, my anus is that unrelaxed. <laughs> All the new subscribers on the channel are going to be like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? Anyway, uh, we're, we're a blunt Yugi tuber that doesn't give a shit what we say, and uh, we're going to call shit out as we see it, especially Master Shits, aka Master Duel, because we refuse to call that Master Duel until it's a good game, which it never fucking will be. I love saying that. <laughs> so, in case you don't know, if you, you know, just play Yu-Gi-Oh! casually, or you just collect, you know, whatever... Japanese cards and all cards that are in the OCG territories of Yu-Gi-Oh! cannot be used in TCG territories uh, in competitive play. So, for example, if you want to go to, like, Nationals in Chicago, you can use foreign cards. You can use Spanish. You can use German. You can use, I think you can even use Portuguese since it's technically Spanish. So you can use languages like that. Those fall within the TCG um 
territory of the game, French even. And, you know, you could play like a, a French Mizuki or a French, you know, Ash Blossom. What you need to have is translations. So for example, if you're playing against me and you play out, I don't know, a German Dark Hole, yeah, we both may know what German Dark Hole actually says, but if I wanted to be a rule shark, I could say, do you have a translation? And if you don't, then you get in trouble uh, by the judges. You get like a game loss, match loss, whatever it is. So you have to have your translations, whether it's a well-known card or not a well-known card. You can now use uh, dueling, I want to say dueling nexus, neuron, neuron. You can use neuron to give the translation because Konami sees that as an official source. However, with something that is a Korean copy of a card, it's it's the whole cards in fucking Korean. You can't use that because that's in an OCG territory. So if you look at the Ghost Bell Starlights right now from Dimension Force, there's a Korean right now, and I love how it says Korean dash not English in all caps, like no shit, and it's eighty dollars. But here's the thing, and this is what I don't get with TCG Player. Why would you allow cards that are in OCG territories in OCG languages? to be on your fucking marketplace. Because even if you're a collector, like, you know, you just want a Starlight Ghost Bell for your collection, right? So you pay 80 bucks, and then it goes up to 85 for another Korean, and then 96 for English, which I think that's fucking nuts. But anyways, um, I actually, in fact, I may even swipe up that $96 one, but is this one Korean too? Yeah, see, this one's Korean too. So a perfect example, this listing for a Korean one that I'm looking at is just says, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, Starlight Rare, view details, it has a picture, but it's $95. And look, I just had to click on the fucking photo to see, is it Korean? So the highest one that a Korean goes for is $96. Even if you're just a collector, why would you waste the money on a Korean copy? Because no one's going to want to buy it off you because it's just an $80 pet rock. Like, that's all it is. You can't use it in competitive play in the TCG unless you know someone who is going to buy different language cards, even if they can't be played here, you know, in your area. Who's to say that they're going to pay you the market value? Who's to say that they're not going to be like, well, even though you paid 80, I'm only going to give you 50 bucks. Like, there is no reason that I can think of that you would want to buy a Korean card off of this marketplace for your use. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe there are people in OCG territories who have access to TCG player that will buy these Korean versions and, you know, just go to town and play them in their local tournament stores. But if they don't, just assuming that you're in a TCG territory, why would you allow these OCG cards to be in the marketplace. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, Avery, what's the big deal? Why can't we use cards on the OCG? Why, why isn't that allowed? Here's the issue. OCG cards are printed differently than they are in the TCG. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's take something like uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon, right? And I say that because I have three copies that are all three Japanese. The cards themselves have a glossier feel to them. Even the commons do. Uh, like a Zodiac Tiger Mortar I have that's Japanese has a glossier feel to it than a TCG card. You know, you can kind of feel the cardboard and it doesn't feel super glossy. If you remember Hobby League cards from years and years ago, they had that really thick glossy feel to them. It's similar to that. So if you allowed OCG cards that had that glossy print, that could open up players to stacking their decks more than a lot of players probably already fucking do. So they can't really allow that to happen. And on top of that too, it creates an imbalance because Konami will print cards in OCG territories at a different rarity than here in the TCG. Give you a perfect example. Pot of Duality was printed as a secret rare here as its first printing in Duelist Revolution back in 2010. Guess what it was in the OCG? A fucking super rare. Could you imagine if people had access to like super rare dualities that were legal for play on like eBay and even TCG player back then? Oh my lord, it, it'd be a bloodbath for Konami profit-wise. So that's why they don't allow these things. You know, it's different if you're playing casually with your friends. Like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm going to bust out my Korean marshmallow or whatever. Like, yeah, sure, whatever, bro. But in competitive, I mean, that that's just, that's not okay. That's not going to happen as my computer fucking turns off. So <clears throat> I, I just, I'm so tired of this point trying to shop on TCG Player and seeing Korean, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, like I just get this shit off the market. 
or if you can't get it off the market, why can't I have a filter that will actually give me fucking English? Because like, look, I'm looking at Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion right now, Starlight Rare, applied filters, English. What's the first result? An $80 Korean Rare. So does the English not matter? Like, should I put it in Spanish and then I get everything Spanish? Like, I, I don't... I don't understand why is this so fucking broken? Like you open up TCG player infinite and you're just dumping all your loads from your holes into making articles and putting up decks and stuff on that site. And don't get me wrong, like infinite overall for Yu-Gi-Oh articles is actually pretty solid. But why in the fuck am I having to deal with all of these different language cards that everybody has already bitched about at this point and nothing has changed? especially when no one's going to want these foreign copies on the market. And yeah, I could just go to eBay and I very well could, but for people who want a different option or who may want that cheaper price, who's to say that the cheapest price may not be on TCG player compared to eBay or, you know, cool stuff games, super games, Inc, prodigy games, like these other places that have their own storefronts. So anyway, I know that it's not a super big issue for a lot of people, but it's something that is just getting really annoying as time has gone on to try and shop on TCG Player and seeing all this baby back bullshit stuff that I can't even use and all these prices that especially too fucks with like the charts and shit because you think something's high and it's like, oh, well, it looks like it's low. No, it's because the Chinese copy is a fucking dollar. It's actually $5,000 English pimp. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I just off my high horse here? Like... It just, it, it bugs the shit out of me. I don't know if I'm just in a mood or what, but it just, I'm getting tired of it. So guys, please, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.